Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick and we're playing Stationeers. Today we're going to go back to the very basics with our programming and we're going to do a very much bare bones basics introduction to programming. So the basic tools I need for programming are of course your computer. You'll need the IC editor card in the computer. Um, just things like your I see housing in your chip, of course you're going to need them, but just little other things as well, like a logic reader, a slot reader, and an important one is your handheld tablet. This one with a configuration tab in it allows you to look at devices and tell you what values are in there. And most of what you're programming, you're going to be communicating with devices to put values in and out of them. So nice to know all about them that you can. Now your station years wiki is a good source of information. Well, it can be a bit hit and miss, but sometimes it's got some good stuff in there. Sometimes it doesn't tell you much at all. Um, but it has information on the things you'll be wanting to, to use. Um, you'll be wanting to interact with a lot of these things there. So if we've got things like you know, a sorter, it'll tell you the modes, the data parameters on it, the things you're going to be interacting with. Now, the old Stationopedia, this thing here, this will also tell us a lot about what we want to know. Uh, so if we once again look at the, the sorter in there, we find that our sorter, once again, it has slots. It tells us what logic memories we've got there, what logic interactions we have, and what ones are in the slots as well. Uh, we have a few references here. These are all our commands. So we have our functions, which is the language itself. That's the F. That has all of our commands that we can use in the code. We have the device variables and the slot variables as well. Let's not worry too much about them yet. Our functions, it will go through the functions one by one and it will just tell you a quick information about what they do. Some of them are not the most helpful, but you will be looking at this an awful lot when you're learning just to come in and see what parameters you're supposed to be adding to each command. Now once again on the wiki, if you're looking for the language, just search for MIPS, M-I-P-S, and you find the scripting language. For our first code, it's not going to be a full-on Amy script the first time out. Let's get realistic here. If we're just learning, you know, Michelangelo didn't sculpt David on his first day at kinder. I bet he sculpted some crappy ashtray like everyone else did. So we're going to start off with something simple and build up. Now for the first program we're going to write, we'll write something that we can, well, very simply reproduce just using logic trips. Now we're going to take a value from a dial and we're going to write it onto a display. So the process we use for that one is we use a logic reader to read the dial and the variable for that we've got a few there to choose from setting ratio which one do we want well if we use our configuration dial we can take a look at it or you can look it up on the Wikipedia or or whatever but we look at that we have modes we have a pre have hash we have a radio ratio we have a setting now if we change our dial so I'm currently on value 0 change it to 5 you find our setting has changed to 5. Right, change it to 3. Our setting has changed to 3. Fair chance we're looking for the setting there. So we are reading in the dial and the setting. Switch it on. It says it's reading 3. 2, 1, it's reading it there. We're going to use a logic writer to write that value out to the LED display. So in, we take the value that comes from the logic reader output we're going to put to the LED display. Now once again if we take a look at our LED display we'll take a bit of a stab in the dark and say well it's probably going to be the setting. So our out variable is going to be we'll say setting. If we switch it on it works. One. There we go. We guessed right. Now if we change, change that. Five. Our value here has changed as well. Right, so that's all we're going to do. We're going to read from one device and write it to another device. 
So first thing we've got to do is set them up. We've got to hook them up. Now our IC housing has six pins on it. They are labelled D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. They are the devices that will connect to it. So from there, just use your screwdriver. I'm going to hook, we'll hook the, the, the dial to D0. If you can find it. Dial, there we go. And I'll hook the display to D1. That was it back there, wasn't it? D1. So D0, D1. That's our dial and a display. So the code will refer to those two now as D1 and D0. It doesn't know it's a display. The code is just writing to the pin and the pin is then transferring the information on. Now just with the chips we want to read the value in from the dial. So we know that our dial is called D0 in the code so that's fine. Now to load something in it is a L code. So just L. That loads a device from your variable loads a device variable to a register. Right, so now we have the devices which are the pins on the on the chip. We also have registers. Now registers are just a pigeonhole if you like for storing information in the code. They are labeled R0 through to R15. So we've got 16 of them to play with. So, so we want to load into a register from a device whatever variable it was. From the variable we know that that's the setting. So let's go. So first up we want to load just an L to a register. Well we may as well start at the beginning we'll call it register 0. We're loading from pin 0, device 0 which is the dial and the setting is what we're loading. So that code should just take whatever the setting is and store it into R0. Now this is just a single line of code. We say confirm, export, it allows us to test it. We switch it on. It's not giving us a flashing light so it's pretty happy with what we've done. Of course it is just reading it so it's not going to do much. Right. So that's the reading of it done. We now have to write it. So it is done the similar way again. We know that we've got to write to the setting. So it's going to be the same in here. So to save to a device. So we're going to store a register value, one of which is read R0, into a variable on a device. So this time we know we're going to save it to D1. That's the pin that we've got the, the uh, display hooked up to. We're going to save there. Once again, it's going to be the setting that we save, and we are storing register R0. Radio. That's all it is. Confirm. Now, if we export it, we should have done it. It should write into there. Export 5. It's set to 5. We're not getting any errors on our code. That's good. Right. But it is just a lot a set of instructions so it will follow the set of instructions and then the program will end so as we are here it has just followed the set of instructions and that's it it's ended so now if i change the dial there's no update here so it doesn't know it's got to do any more so if we want it to to go back to the start we're going to have to tell it that if we want to repeat it, we just got to tell it to go back to the start. So we will use the J command, which is a jump. So it just changes the execution of the code. It has got to here. We want to say jump back up to the start. It requires a J and an integer, which is a number. So we're just going to say jump back to line zero. And that's it. So just after you've done it, just do it again. And it'll just keep doing it. So each time it comes down to here, it'll say go back to the start. So jumps into an infinite loop from there. Rightio. Export. So we're not getting any errors. Right, we have a 2 on the screen, 2 here. We change that to a 1, we're back to a 1. And it is updating whatever the dial says. 
we're done. We've got our first program there. We have replaced what we've done with those chips with a code. So while this code works, it is not the most user friendly thing that we've got here. So there's a few, few good housekeeping things, good coding practice things that we can do to make sure it works properly. It's a bit easy to manage. Now, with, with the jump command, we're jumping back to line zero. Now that works fine right now, but if we want to expand that code one day and we decide to put a heap of extra code in the start, we don't want it to go back to line zero now. We want to go back to line three. So when you add that code in, you have to remember to come back and change that to a three. Otherwise your code might not work properly. If you've got a big code, that can be tricky to remember if you've got a few of them to find. So instead of using direct line numbers, it can be best to use tags. Now tags are just a user, user created uh, name that you put in, put in there, which serves as, as a reference point to jump to. So if we just call one there, if I use my full imagination to mark the start of a code, I'll call it start. You put a colon behind it, it turns purple. The code knows that it's a tag there, which is just nothing it has to worry about. It's just controlling a loop. So now here, instead of three, we're going to say we're going to jump to the start. It jumps back to that tag. So now if I add more lines in here, it doesn't matter. I don't have to come back and change that because the start has moved down as well. So that's a good a good one there, although it's the jump says we've got to use a number there. We don't. We can use a number, but using a tag is going to be a much safer way of doing it. Next up, we can name our devices and registers so they make a bit more sense. Um, so if we came back to this code and sort of said, well, what the hell is the device DZ? What did I have connected there? I can't remember. It's something that responded to setting, but there's lots of things that respond to settings. The display responds to the setting command. The dial display responds to the setting command. What was it? So it's handy just for the readability of a code to rename these pins right at the start. We can do that with an alias command, which just gives an alias to the pin numbers. So our pin D0 is our dial. So once again, I'll use all my imagination, come up with a name for it. And that is now D0. Right, it starts an easy one to find, alias. So we've just got to give it a string, which is any name that we want. Don't use a name that's already reserved as a control word. And we can rename a register or a device. Right, so we know that device D0 is now dial. So instead of calling things D0, I can copy and paste that in there. So now whenever I say dial, the code will know that I'm referring to pin D0. It changes none of the code, but it makes it a hell of a lot easier for me to read. So now I know that I'm dealing with the dial in this line. I can do the same with the display, once again, with an alias display and D1. Once again, I can copy. Now if I come back to that in a month's time, I know that I'm dealing with a dial and a display. I'm displaying a number from a dial. And once again, you can do the same with your registers. Here, we're just loading it in, and then using it the next line. You probably don't need to name that, but for the sake of it, we will. And that is the, I don't know, it's a reading. You can call it whatever you want. Right now, let's once again copy that. Right, so now we know that we're reading the setting from the dial. We're storing it as a reading and then we're displaying that again on the display. Now, once again, as I say, you're using it on the next line there, so you don't really need to name that. But if you've got 100 lines of code and you're looking for it further down in the program, it's a good idea to name it. Um, 
hey, there we go. That's your first program. It's not much, but it gets you there. I say, once you can learn to use your load and your save commands, just to jump to the start, that will cover a hell of a lot of what you want to do. So if on your first program you only learn how to use them, you're a long way progressed. Confirm. We'll export that to make sure that it's still working. No problems. Now the thing you get with this now is when I look at that, you can see there written in yellow, dial. Beside that, display. They're the names that we've given the pins in our code. So now as soon as you put that in there and you forget how to hook it up, you put it in there, it says dial. Ah, I've got to hook the dial up to that one. Display. I've got to hook the display up to that one. The other ones don't have anything in yellow written there because they haven't been named. So I can probably just guess that I don't have to hook everything up to them. So we're good. So aliases are good. They help you read the code and they give you that hint on the displays. So if you can get that your first day, you've done well. So I'll call it there for this first session. So till next time, happy building. See ya.